Okay, good morning, everyone. And welcome to the first uh, Friday coffee organized by Elixir Czech Republic. As you probably know, Elixir Czech Republic is the infrastructure for biological data. I am head of that infrastructure. My name is Yusif Ondrášek. I am from the Institute of Organic Chemistry and Biochemistry. The infrastructure has 14 members, which is covering the uh, major universities in the Czech Republic and the institutions of Academy of Sciences. So we have in all together about 14 institutions and we are actually providing access to almost 70, 70 tools and services. The aim of that webinar is to actually show you and briefly introduce most of that services and tools we are actually working on. So this will be about 20 minutes when will we tell you about the reason why this particular service or tool or other stuff was created, then short introduction of the principle, and at the end, uh, very short kind of the examples how to use it. During the lecture, uh, you will not have the chance to actually ask the question directly, but you can use a chat icon at the go-to meeting, and then in five minutes, uh, the presenter will try to answer the, let's say, the brief questions. But for the purpose of further collaboration, we will provide always the contact on the email for the either the presenter or the team who developed that particular service. So the first one, the first service we are going to show you today is the integrated database of small molecules which was created here at the institute of organic chemistry and biochemistry by jakub galgonek and his team so jakub will tell you why we actually penetrated that chemical biology field what was the reason what was the aim of the project will tell you a bit about the background of why the particular technology uh, was used and then uh, Jakub will also show you how to use it. So uh, at the end, uh, you will be probably able not only to find that tool and service, but also you will see the face of the creator and uh, you will know also the email. So Jakub, the floor is yours and enjoy your morning coffee. Uh, thank you, Yishi. Uh, so, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Jakub Kalkonek, and I would like to introduce you our integrated database of small molecules called simply IDSM. Uh, the primary goal of the IDSM database is to integrate various free small molecules data set and make them available via semantic web technologies. Currently, it integrates PubChem, Campbell, and Hebe. Uh, as we adopt data, data sets from other projects, we mainly focus on software parts of uh, database uh, development. Uh, at the beginning of my presentation, I will tell you something about semantic web technologies in general. Uh, then I will say some details about our approach and how the database is implemented. And finally, I will show you our services in uh, practice. At first, I will try to answer the question why the semantic web was introduced. The classical World Wide Web contains incredible amount of data. Unfortunately, this data can be simply read typically only by humans. Uh, issues arise when uh, this data should be processed automatically. Uh, for example, a user can visit some company website and find here the postal address of this company. However, this task cannot be simply performed automatically by a software agent if there is no standard way how this data should be represented on the web. And that is why the semantic web was introduced. The goal of the semantic web was to make data on the web 
machine readable to increase their interoperability and usability. Uh, although these technologies are not widely adopted by web authors, they are used now by creators that want to present their data set in a well-defined and interoperable form. And it also includes creators of biological and chemical data sets. Uh, the key semantic web technology is the resource decision framework, abbreviated as RDF. This framework defines how to represent information about resources, where a resource is an abstraction of some entity in the world. In this framework, each piece of information is expressed as simple sentence in the form subject, predicate, object. Such a triple denotes uh, that um, the subject is related to the object and the kind of this relation is uh, denoted by the predicate. An example of such a triple is sentence, for example, aspirin has smaller mass, 180 grams per mole. In this sentence, uh, aspirin is a subject, has smaller mass is predicate, and um, 180 grams per mole is an object. Uh, although this basic concept is very simple, it is able to express very complex information as a set of such triples. To identify resources, the RDF framework employs internationalized resource identifiers. A subset of uh, these identifiers you surely know as web addresses. Uh, these identifiers have a global meaning, where, which makes interlink between various data set easy and straightforward. The predicates are also identified by these identifiers, which avoid the situation where a certain property name has different meaning in different data sets, which is very important for good interoperability. A set of identifiers used for describing data related to some area of interest is called an RDF vocabulary. Uh, these vocabularies and data ontologies are typically described by the web ontology language that forms another very important semantic web technology. Uh, in order to support querying RDF dataset, the Spark query language was introduced. This language is based on patterns that should be matched by requested data. Uh, the language is slightly inspired by the SQL query language that is used for querying relational database. Uh, each Sparkle service listens for a request at the specific web address that is denoted as its Sparkle endpoint. However, the terms Sparkle endpoint and Sparkle service are often used as synonyms. One of the most important features of the Sparkle language is the federated query extension. It uh, allows uh, Spark service to redirect a portion of a query to another Spark service and to combine obtained results with results from the rest of the query. Uh, this highly increases interoperability because one, qu one query allows users to get the information from different uh, data sets. Uh, later, I will show you an example how one query can uh, employ four Sparkle services to solve a very complex task. Ah. As I have already said, the semantic web technologies were adopted also by many chemical and biological data sets. For example, the protein sequence database Uniprot, the biochemical reaction database REA, and human protein database Nextprot. They all are already exported in the RDF form. Uh, for these databases, there are also dedicated Sparkle endpoints 
that allow for querying in these uh, data sets. Nevertheless, we are focused primary, uh, primarily on small molecules data sets. So there are also exist several well-established small molecule data sets that are already available in RDF as well. Uh, specifically, there are the PubChem database uh, focused on chemical molecules and their activities, the bioactive molecule database Campbell, and database of chemical entities of biological interest called KEBI. Unfortunately, none of these three small molecules databases has currently an official Sparkle endpoint. Hence, uh, we decided to add these three data sets into our database to support querying in the data sets to increase their usability and interoperability. Uh, we started our experiments with semantic web technologies and small molecules databases in 2013, we examined several Sparkle engines, but none of them was fully suitable for our purposes in terms of stability, efficiency, and extensibility. Uh, for this reason, we decided to implement our own Sparkle engines three years ago. Uh, our solution is based on the well-established open source relational database Postgres. And in our approach, data are stored in a Postgres database in an optimized relational schema that allows efficient querying. To represent this stored data in RDF, we define mappings describing conversion of individual table rows into equivalent set of RDS triples. Nevertheless, and it is very important, these RDF triples are never explicitly materialized. Instead of that, the mapping is used to translate incoming Spark queries into equivalent SQL queries that generate request query results. Uh, one of the most important feature of our engine is its extensibility. We were motivated by the fact that each good small molecules database should support substructure and similarity search of store compounds. Uh, unfortunately, Sparkle doesn't have any standard mechanism to add such an extension. So we have to find a solution. Uh, we take advantage of the fact that uh, Postgres supports OVAN database extension. So we design our engine to be able to employ this Postgres extension. It allows us to integrate substructure and similarity ser search based on our former SageM projects. Uh, what is uh, the most important? We add support for this extension without changing the Sparkle syntax, which is very important for the compatibility with other tools. Uh, instead of that, our engine is able to interpret some set of triples as usage of an extension. So it is uh, transparent for other services and tools that are not aware of involved extensions. Uh, for example, our engine interprets these three triples that are shown on this slide as an extension to search all compounds that contains guanine tautomers as their substructures. Uh, currently, as part of our project, we operate several Sparkle endpoints. The most important endpoint is the first one that integrates data from PubChem, Campbell, and Kebe datasets. Currently, it contains more than 16 billion virtual triples. Uh, other endpoints are focused to support substructure and similarity search in PubChem, Kebe, Campbell, and DragBank uh, dataset. 
The biggest one is the PubChem endpoint, allowing substructure and similarity search amount more than 100 million compounds. Uh, although the endpoints are directly accessible from an internet browser, uh, they are mainly intended to be used only for programmatic access by other services, for example, as part of federated queries. For a regular user, we offer several services accessible from our website. Or alternatively, user can use our services also as a part of uh, their service, for example. Uh, and I think that now is a good time to show you our services in practice. So, the first user interface available from our website is the SageM GUI that is based on the EPAM Catcher editor. It represents the simplest possible way how to use um, SageM search functionality. The usage is very simple. At first, I have to draw a query structure, uh, for example, phenol. Uh, then I have to set uh, some search parameters. The most important one is uh, to select a data set. And now I can click on the search uh, button. The query is now evaluated by corresponding IDSM endpoint and the results are displayed as molecule images with links to original resources. Uh, so, here you can see the molecules included in the Campbell's and contains phenol as their substructure. Alternatively, I can change parameters to obtain compounds similar to phenol. Uh, to obtain more results, uh, it is possible to set a small threshold, as you can see now. The second interface is Sparta GUI that is based on the DIAS GUI interface. Uh, this interface is a universal Sparkle interface and it is intended as a playground when you can discover how our endpoints can be used and combined with other services. For this purpose, the interface contains a list of several examples as you can see on the left side. Mm. These examples are sent uh, either on our Sparkle endpoints or on third-party endpoints in cases when our endpoints are used as parts of federated queries. And uh, as I promised before, now I would like to show you the example how four services can be used together to solve a complex task. So the query that you can see here on the slides should retrieve inhibitors of proteins that catalyze rare reaction involving cholesterol, cholesterol or cholesterol derivatives. Uh, because the rare reaction database is built on KB, the IDSM KB service is used first to obtain KB compounds that contain cholesterol as their substructure. It is this part of the query. Uh, these compounds are then utilized by the REA service to identify, identify a reaction in which the compounds are involved. It is uh, this part of the query. Uh, because Uniprot is inter interlinked with rare reactions, the Uniprot Sparta service is then used to retrieve human protein that catalyzed identified reaction. It is, it is this part of the query. Uh, and finally, the IDSM service is used to select uh, Campbell substances 
that are annotated as inhibitors of the selected proteins. It is this part of the query. And that is all. After the query is submitted, Sparkle service communicated with each, uh, with each other, and it takes some time uh, depending on the availability of services, and then the final results are returned. So here you can see the inhibitors of uh, proteins that catalyze reaction involving these cholesterol-like compounds. Uh, the last interface available on our website is the HemWeb application. The application allows you to edit Sparkle queries and browse query results in a user-friendly way. The application is divided into three parts, the query editor on the left side, the result table in the central part, and the results browser on the uh, right side. The query editor is based on the code and mirror editor and is support syntax highlighting and auto competition. It is also able to show you the errors uh, if your query is incorrect, as you can see here. Uh, query can be created from the scratch or it can be loaded uh, uh, from a set of predefined examples. Uh, another possibility is to use the query wizard that allows you to generate query searching for compounds, bioassay participants, or their combination. Uh, uh, the results of submitted query is shown as a table. Each variable uh, from the query is represented by one column. Uh, in our approach, resources in the database can be associated with templates used for their visualization. It allows us to present the results in the user-friendly way and not as only as raw and ugly identifiers. Uh, details about the selected resources, if it is available, is provided on the right side of the application. Alternatively, you can use uh, this step to display all properties of select resource. Uh, it uses the selected resource as a subject and show all predicates and objects for which subject predicate object triples are stored in our database. And more details about uh, the application you can find in manual. And As I have already said, our Sparkle endpoints can also be integrated into other services. For example, if you visit uh, the REA website, there is possibility to find um, compounds involved in the reaction according to their structure. So when I draw a query structure, for example, phenol again, and when I submit the query, the REA service uh, sends the query structure to our service to identify Campbell compounds, then contains this uh, query structure as uh, substructure. Then REA service extends our results with information uh, about the reactions stored in their database. And the final results are then present to you and you can browse them. So, for example, here you can see a reaction involving uh, involving phenol, and this is all. So, uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, for more information or to send your feedback, you can contact me on my email that you can see here on the slide. So. 
Thank you again. Thank you, Jakub, very much for your presentation. I saw no 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 question in the chat. So I suppose that if you are interested about some features or usage of it, uh, please send directly the questions to Jakub or you can start a collaboration with our team. Uh, see you on the next Friday and we will present you another tool and service from the IOCB and follow also the Elixir Check uh, website where you will see the detailed schedule for the next Friday's coffee. Thank you very much for your attention and looking forward to see you again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.